one third nerd we are on chapter five chapter five desperately seeking geeks the next morning when we open the door a bag of kitty litter is sitting outside in a plastic box with a note attached dakota grins we get the kitty litter box set up and put it on the patio with cupcake we need a teacher to use it but there's no time right now I pull on my hoodie and grab Izzy's hand and the three of us take off. The weather is starting to turn. A light mist is falling. It sits like a roof on my hair. We pass Mr. Torps in weird black stretchy pants heading down our stairs to talk to mom. Uh oh, Dakota says as she hops on the landing with her polka dot backpack. Hi Mr. Torps, Izzy waves. Then she runs up to him and hands him something. When she gets back, I ask her, what did you give him? Money, Izzy says. Monopoly money? She nods. What do you think Twerps will say? Dakota asks me. He'll probably tell Mom not to let you blow things up. Dakota grins. How am I supposed to cure cancer if I can't practice? Cure cancer? By exploding watermelons? It's a start, Liam. Think about it. If I cure cancer, we'll never have to worry about money again. But I'll need help. Really, I can't imagine why, I say sarcastically. We have money, Izzy says. The bus stop is at the top of the hill. There are three girls up there already. When Izzy sees them, she pulls free and runs the rest of the way up. The three girls all hug her. They're younger than she is, but she doesn't care. For Izzy, friendship is contagious. Dakota rattles on. I tune back in. My club is going to help me. Your what? Remember, mom told me to start a club? Dakota doesn't have mates, as my mom calls them. The only time Dakota ever has kids over that aren't my friends or Izzy friends, mom has invited them. Friends your mom makes for you are not the same as real friends. I look around hoping to see Dodge, but I don't expect to. Most of the time, Crash drives him. Dakota has a dreamy look. Everyone is going to want to join. Who doesn't want to be a rich nerd with a finish up? A finish up? What's that? Dakota juts her chin out. A finish up, Liam. You know, a company that makes a lot of money. Oh, you mean a startup? Oh, yeah, Dakota nods, unzipping her backpack and pulling out seven pink wristbands made from torn up pink tutus. Every kid who gets 97.5 or better on our science test will receive one of these. 97.5? They can miss one, she explains. Oh, how generous of you. Miss Johnson makes mistakes. Oh, so they're allowed to miss one if it's your teacher's fault? I ask as the bus rumbles around the corner. When are you planning to give those out? She picks her backpack up at recess. That's when the glitter nerds meet. Glitter nerds? Is that what you're going to call them? You're not inviting any boys, are you? Because boys don't like glitter. Mom said boys can wear glitter if they want to. Mom is an expert on this. Dakota nods. We're going to meet at the big library table. Nobody goes to the library at recess. Nerds do. Dakota gets in line in front of me. The bus stops with a hissing poof and the door flaps open. I keep an eye on Izzy, who is holding hands with the little girls. They get on first. Those are 100% nerds. What you need are partial nerds. Dakota frowns at me. I'm not a partial. Tell me about it. Well, it's better if nobody but us goes to the library. She bangs her backpack, bump, 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 onto the bus. Then it won't be hard to get a table. Once we get to school, Dakota and I walk Izzy to her class. At home, Izzy's size doesn't seem unusual. She's only seven. But when she's with the other second graders, I see how small she is. As soon as we drop Izzy off, I start ignoring Dakota. Nobody in fifth grade talks to anyone in third grade, for obvious reasons. But there are a couple of guys on my tennis team who, through no fault of their own, are in Dakota's class. I can't believe there are third graders good enough for our team, but there are. I'd rather my sister didn't ask them to wear a pink tutu wristband because guys on your team are important. Being on a team isn't a superpower, but it is close. Later at recess, I can't keep myself from swinging past the library on my way to the Gaga pit. Gaga is like dodgeball, only better. Everybody plays it around here. 
Through the window, I spot Dakota at a table with her pile of pink wristbands. A couple of fifth grade girls walk by wearing wolf ears. They don't go in. A girl is in the back of the library reading. She doesn't look up. And then another girl walks by, the little sister of a guy I know. Great, she'll probably tell her brother she saw me standing by myself outside of the library. Two guys walk in, Dakota waves at them. They run in the other direction. Dakota slinks down in her chair. I can't watch. If I'm standing here, people will remember that this is my sister. I head for the Gaga pit where I get nailed immediately. Dakota's messing with my mojo. I wait for my turn to get back in. I'm almost up when it occurs to me that it might be better to exercise damage control. I head back to the library and peek in the window. Dakota's still there, only now there's a pink wristband in front of each empty chair and she is under the table. Liam, Dodge calls from the fifth grade garden. I motion for him to come over. He looks in the library window and then shakes his head. We can't let that go on, he mumbles. We push through the library door. Dakota, what are you doing down there? I ask. No one came, Dakota says in a squashed down voice. Did you show the video before class? I ask. She nods. That's strange, Dodge says. I told some kids about the exploding watermelon and everyone liked it. Dakota's eyes glow. You told fifth graders? Dodge nods. I bet the third graders didn't really understand. It's more of a fifth grade thing. Dakota's face lights up like a fluorescent fish. Me and Liam want to join. Dodge says. Dakota frowns. Liam doesn't want to. Dodge kneels down. He told me he did, but he was afraid to tell you. Right, Liam? I chomp the inside of my cheek, but I nod yes. Dakota's blue eyes shine. She gets out from underneath the table and ties a pink band around Dodge's wrist and one around mine. Let's go play Gaga, Dodge says. I look at Dakota. I can't exactly let her stand here looking pathetic for the rest of recess. You too, I mumble. They don't let third graders in the Gaga pit, Dakota says. They will if you're with us, I say. A little gasp comes out of Dakota. She scoops up the wristbands and trots after us. The end of chapter five.